And the result of all that dial fiddling are these four crank pins and the crank pin washers on top. And these crank pin washers are, if I arrange it properly, they are cross drilled. So they're ready to receive some, some pins in due course. I now have a locking lever for the carriage, which is really easy to, uh, to manage. The original instructions suggest cutting from bar material and drilling the two pilot holes um, through for a, a 1 8 inch pin uh, and reaming to a pin size and then using that to clamp both sets of rods together and machine the rods um, as a single unit in all dimensions uh, except the, uh, the thickness. So I think I'm going to try that. Given the level of accuracy we've been talking about, you know, 15 thou over 10 and three quarter inches, um, I appreciate that this might seem rather agricultural, um, but I've got to bear in mind, um, we're visually centered on this boss, and the most important thing is the distance between this hole and the next hole. Um, so now we've centered it up with this center finder, it's now uh, straight on that uh, laser cut cross there, which is as good as any. Uh, I am now going to Draw that and remit one eighth, then hopefully move across the exact right required amount and do the same on the other side. And there we go, baby's first machinist jack. If you remember, some time ago I replaced the um, slightly bodged lever system here that was in place for the quick traverse, which I just generally don't use. Um, but underneath here, you can see the um, Allen head locking screws for the various axes. Now, I'd always locked the table, particularly if I was, um, you know, I was only milling in this direction, and I locked the table that way. Um, but I was never really knocking, locking the knee. And actually, that that really stiffens things up a huge amount and, and I'm, I feel kicking myself really for not doing that. So stiffening up the knee here and basically all the axes that aren't gonna be, um, gonna be used as part of an operation. Right now I'm drilling, so in theory I can lock all of them. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm pretty sure you've all seen drilling before. So I'm gonna skip all the plain drilling stuff and just take you back when I'm doing something interesting. Right, so the idea here is to make a couple of pins. So I'm going to cut a 60 degree point on the end of this silver steel ground rod. And then I'm gonna turn down the OD to 1 8 of an inch. And that should give me a shouldered pin to use in the uh, coupling rod alignment. So here is the chassis laying on its side, and here's the coupling rod with those uh, two holes I've just drilled. Now, if I place a pin in this hole to align it to the center, and that's why we, we drill the 60 degree angle on there to match the center hole that's in the end of the axle. Then we have a second pin. We drop that over here. You can see it drops really nicely straight into the end of the axle. So now we know that these are the exact center distances of the two axles. So having drilled one hole on the other axle, I can now mount them together and drill through the second. And there we go. So here, <clears throat> and there we go. So here are the two coupling rods, and I can see I've got that alignment pin now um, down the middle of uh, of these two holes. There's another hole in, in this side here. Um, and now on this side, I don't know if you can see, but there's a, there's a little hole there. And I can just use that as a drilling guide and just drill straight through that hole into the, uh, the, other, the other side of the coupling rod. Well, I now have this set up where I can drill straight through this coupling rod. And I probably will do it, one eighth of an inch. Um, but the instructions to this build series suggest 
uh, drilling to one eighth of an inch and then pinning them together and using that as a way to machine the outside faces of the rods. But because these are laser cut, most of that's done already. So the, the necessity of that is a bit lower. Also, there's an assumption that the builder doesn't have access to a milling, a vertical milling machine, certainly, and maybe only to a drill press. And so those 1 8 inch holes are used as guides for a 7 16 to test on the crank pins and the wheels, and then ultimately to open out again to 9 16 for a press fit on the bushes. So I can't think of a reason now why I wouldn't drill these 7 16 or ring them 7 16 um, and try and fit them onto the, onto the wheels. Uh, because I can use a 7 16 pin to hold them together uh, for the rest of the machining. So I might have to come back to that one because um, without the drills, without the parts and with this little minor injury, um, there's not much machining happening this side of Christmas, I'm afraid. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the new year. Have a great one.